guys just take a seat real quick. Again, there's some more people coming in, so if you could just scoot into the middle, um, give those people a spot to sit out on the sides, please. That'd be awesome. Um, we're really grateful to have everyone here uh, tonight, and we're excited to once again have an incredible speaker with us. Uh, just kind of by way of announcement, uh, at the Entrepreneurship Center, we're getting a lot of things ready for the Entrepreneurship Week, is, which is coming up here in just a few weeks. And we'd love to see all, all of you get involved. So kind of stay tuned for some of those announcements as they, as they come along. Um, tonight, we, we're really fortunate to have Mark Young with us. Uh, Mark has been involved in the franchise business for over 30 years. He uh, owns and operates uh, multiple McDonald's and a couple of other franchise uh, brands. He, at, at his peak of working with McDonald's, he owned six different uh, franchise McDonald's, three of which were some of the top performing McDonald's in the United States. And so he's very talented and, and accomplished in the franchising space. Um, just getting to, to know Mark a little bit before, he just has a really uh, incredible talent for helping other people. He's very passionate about helping uh, uh, young people and people of our generation uh, to grow up and develop business skills and manage businesses of their own. So we're really fortunate to have him here and have him share some of his experiences with us. Um, he has an undergraduate from the University of Utah and uh, he also has a master's degree from Michigan State. And so he's uh, very accomplished, very um, talented, and we're also very lucky to have uh, his wife, Sue, here with us as well. And uh, please join me in welcoming Mark Young. Well, it is a real pleasure to be with you. You are an inspiring group. Uh, I'm... Uh, Grateful that my wife Sue is here, as mentioned. She and I have been partners in our life and business. Uh, I always took care of the restaurant side and she took care of the back office and everything worked well because she said she didn't have to work with me each day in the, in the restaurants. Uh, I'm very close friends with Mike Glauser. Mike, thanks for the invitation, that's why I'm here. He and I go way back 40 years, 40 years ago and I've watched him and his success and so that's why I'm here. It's great to be with you. I wanted to make sure I have a good friend that just showed up. Bren, where are you? There you are, so welcome, Bren. Glad you're here, glad you're home. Anyway, thank you for uh, the opportunity to speak today and talk to you about uh, uh, franchising and talk about my story. Mike asked me to share my story with you and in some ways, I guess I'm gonna start it off with a Vince Lombardi quote where he once said, it's hard to beat someone who never gives up. And, and that's gonna be a bit of a theme for what we talk about tonight. And I hope it helps inspire you and help you in some ways because it's really difficult to beat someone in business if that person never gives up. And we're gonna talk about that. So let me start and talk about my story a little bit about how Sue and I began years ago. And let me shift into 10 principles that I've identified for a successful life in business Really, they're my, my success story, and, and I'll share those 10 success points of interest with you, and then we'll spend a lot of time talking about question, and answering questions, and maybe there's things on your mind that you wanna talk about with franchising. So my story really began in terms of business after leaving the University of Utah, going back to Michigan State University. Uh, many years ago, when I was young, not much, uh, older than you. Sue and I jumped in our little orange Ford Fiesta and headed from Salt Lake City back to uh, Michigan State with not much more than two nickels to rub together. And we went back to Michigan State and did our graduate work back there in organizational behavior, uh, really a degree that was combined with some communication skills and undergraduate work and some business related. I always thought that I would be a business consultant. I thought I'd come back, go to work in business for a few years and thought I might end up in consulting and doing something, but my pathway took a different direction. I came back from Michigan State and I took a position with an advertising agency in Salt Lake City that handled the regional McDonald's advertising business. And I was hired to be the account executive with this ad agency. 
And uh, I was elated with that. At that time, McDonald's held every kind of prize and record you could possibly think of for advertising and marketing. They were at the top of their game and, and stayed there for many years. And so I was pleased to be in the advertising business. Uh, so that began and, uh, and, I went, and that went underway. And, and there's a principle here right at this story that I want to share with you that I think might benefit you. Uh, Early on in my career with that ad agency, I made the decision to go the extra mile and do something extra. If you want to get ahead, always give more than what is expected. And so as a young account executive working on this McDonald's advertising account, I did something that nobody else had ever done in that, in that position. And I went, I called some of the McDonald's franchisees and I said, would you mind, as they knew who I was, their new account executive on the advertising side, and I said, would you mind if I could come in on Saturdays and flip burgers with you in your restaurant? Nobody had ever done that from the advertising agency. Now that proved to be very significant in my career as time went on because I came, in, so I went into several different of these owners' businesses, learned how to, uh, uh, learned their business. I learned what it meant to be on the front lines of a McDonald's restaurant and, and, and what it took to be who these owners were. So as I did that, uh, and what proved successful with that as time went on, it was only a few months after that that the McDonald's uh, corporate side and the McDonald's owners decided to terminate their relationship with that ad agency. So here I am with just about six months under my belt working with this ad agency and I'm about to, the account that I'm working on, they're gonna fire us, terminate our relationship. Uh, but what happened, and I didn't know this was going on behind the scenes, is because of some of this work I did, extra and really getting to know them, they said, they said to the new agency that they were hiring, will you bring on this young account executive named Mark, and will you bring him on and take him away from that agency and bring him over? And so can you see there that that little extra mile of going the extra mile, really getting to know these guys and trying to learn their business made such a difference because I would have, that would have been the end of my career with McDonald's and everything because we lost the account. So I went over to the new agency, went to work with them and just continued doing what I was doing. Well, as time goes on, uh, it was during that period of time that uh, I got to know these owners well and I came home one evening to Sue and said, I'd rather flip these burgers than advertise them. I'd rather get in and figure out a way that we can own a franchise and be a part of that. And so we began to put together a plan and had a vision and a dream of doing that. And we put that together uh, and we began to apply for that franchise. Now, the other principle I wanna talk to you about is this idea of never giving up. And when hard times come, you have to have be cemented in what your dreams are, your vision of what you want to achieve, so that when hard knocks come, you, you stick to it. Uh, as I was involved in that part of the story, uh, and working with the ad agency, I began to put into place the opportunity to try to buy a franchise, kind of in the background. And I was told by McDonald's Corporation, you will never own a McDonald's as long as you're working for one of our agencies. Because they would have a principle in place where they wouldn't want us to, they wouldn't want to be pirating people from their agencies for, for their business. And so we made a decision to walk away from the advertising business at that time, why? Because our dream was cemented and our goal of owning a McDonald's franchise was so firm in our hearts that we knew that's what we wanted. And so we, we discontinued working for the ad agency and I went to work uh, uh, and, and right after we discontinued, I applied for a franchise with McDonald's. But because I had done it through the Denver regional office and they had already said no, I decided to go through the back door and apply through the Kansas City office. And so you just, whatever it is, people, you've gotta decide, whatever your goal is, you've gotta find a way to do it even though you have roadblocks along the way. And so, with that in mind, I, I ended up getting accepted into the franchising program through Kansas City, and then through that, it, it, uh, I was so far into the program at that time that they transferred me back to where I was living in the Denver regional area, 
and then we became a part of uh, uh, the training and became a, 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 an applicant in the franchising program. Now what that means, folks, is that you get to train and learn how to become a McDonald's owners with no guarantees. They've not promised you anything. You simply begin to work 20, 25 hours a week learning the business while you're doing whatever else you're doing. Now I had to continue to earn a living. And so I found a great position as the admission, director of admissions and marketing for a small business college called Stevens Henniger Business College in Utah and did that work for them. Uh, while in the background I was training on nights and weekends in McDonald's. For free, thank you, Sue, for, uh, Key point. Key point because uh, the key point in that is that I'm doing all this work on the side, 20, 25 hours a week, in addition to my full-time position, trying to build that college and doing great work for them. Uh, and, and so it was really a tough, a tough period, but we knew what we wanted and we were focused on what our goals were. Uh, well, at that point there was, and I was into that for about a year or so, doing this training and doing that when one Monday morning I walked into the office at Stevens Henniger and this wonderful owner, still a great mentor of mine, a wonderful person, uh, called me into his office, the owner of the college, and said, what is my director of admissions doing moonlighting at McDonald's on the weekends? I was discovered. I was, he, he found out what I was doing. And, at, and so I leveled with him and told him at that point that my real dream was this McDonald's vision that I had. Uh, and he knew I wasn't shortchanging him in any way, but he said, you really have a choice. It's either us or them. And, and I said, well, the choice has already been made. And so two weeks later, I packed my bags again. And at that, that time, Sue and I sat down, uh, no job, young family, uh, with this dream of McDonald's, these roadblocks that kept coming our way. And at that point, uh, uh, Sue and I decided that uh, she was a successful dental hygienist at the time and was, had been working part-time and she went back to work full-time in the dental hygiene field, and I decided, we decided that I would accelerate my training at McDonald's and go full-time into that and see if that would accelerate this. Because the average time back then was about three years of this before you were awarded a franchise. And we'd now been into it a, not quite a year altogether. Well, anyway, uh, uh, that proved to be very successful, and uh, we were then awarded our, our franchise with McDonald's, uh, which happened to be this little remote corner called Kimball Junction in Park City, Utah. Has anybody ever been to Kimball Junction, Park City, Utah? You've driven by there, you know where those outlet malls are? Well, back when we opened that restaurant, there was a gas station and an old hotel, motel, and us. There was nothing else there. I look like the smartest man on the planet opening that McDonald's there with what you now see there. So we've owned and operated that restaurant. We did for 26 years. And uh, four years ago, we sold that restaurant to our oldest son and we sold the other restaurants we had. And during that 26 years, after owning that, we, we developed and grew into six total restaurants, McDonald's, and ran those. Now, that's the story and that's kind of this and, and I've really cut to the chase with it for the purpose of leaving time to talk about other things, but that's the story I wanted to share with you because I wanted you to understand the foundation or the platform from where I come from. And it was becoming so determined with what our goal was that nothing was gonna stop us from getting there. And we got there. And it's been a, a wonderful opportunity. Now, owning McDonald's for me, uh, my dream was never to own hundreds of McDonald's. I have friends who, I had a friend that owned 66 McDonald's, others that owned 40, they owned, you know, large, large McDonald's corporations out there. Our goal was to own McDonald's that provided for us and facilitated for us the lifestyle that we wanted, which was to provide opportunities for people, our children, and others. We really felt like in our lives, that uh, we were really blessed with people that helped us along the way. 
uh, your good friend, Mike Glauser, is one of those, and family members and others that were a, a real blessing in our lives. And so we wanted to have the kind of business that would facilitate us paying back and giving back into the communities and the people where we live. Over the 26 years that we owned those restaurants, this is one statistic I'm very proud of, Mike. We had 24 of 26 years of positive sales growth during those 26 years. We, we think we knew how to run those as well or better than most franchises out there. And, and there's some secrets to that that we might be able to talk about. Uh, and, and so that's that story. Now, four years ago we left that because we left and served an LDS mission for the last three years. We've been home from that for about seven months. Uh, and uh, since we've come back, we're looking to re-injure and, and figure out what we can do to help other people. During that 26 years also that we owned and operated McDonald's, we had many people that came to work for us that then went on to own other businesses. We, we made it a practice of ours to not run McDonald's in the typical way. We tried to run it in such a way that, that the employees we had would stay with us long term and would develop business, uh, their business careers in such a way that they could then leave and own their own businesses. And I won't go into all that, but we have many people that are out there that own their own businesses that went through our employment. And that was one of our goals, to give back. So, let me just pause there for a minute. That's the story. Is, is, is there a question about that story or a thought, anything that comes to mind? I wanna interrupt with some questions, then I wanna go to this other things for just a few minutes. Ta any, I just wanna open this up for a second. Okay, good. Question is, what is a franchise? There's different ways to get into business. You know, you, could, you have a creative, great idea of where you wanna go out and start a business selling something, so you start it from scratch and you create the whole thing and, and everything that supports that business. Franchising is, and a franchise is where you, became a, you become a licensee or a legal franchisee of a parent company like McDonald's Corporation and they award you a franchise and uh, you become a part of their system. You're a business owner, uh, you're an entrepreneur in that sense, but you, you have to sell their product and you have to do, and so you have to, uh, you have to be in agreement with the, the franchise agreement you signed or the, the legal documents, but it's a, that's what a franchise is. I had a question about franchises maybe in general. Mm -hmm. um, Good question, and it's changed over the years. I'm not sure and, and because of that, I really don't have some of the specific numbers, but I'm close. And, uh, uh, and that's a long discussion, so let me, uh, let me just answer it this way. I, uh, my expertise, expertise over 26 years was McDonald's. In the last six months or so, I've spent a lot of time investigating a lot of different franchises, and then looking at a lot of different options. And uh, each different franchise will have different varying costs. But what is consistent across the board is the fee that you pay them, your franchise fees. Uh, with McDonald's, they might average anywhere from eight and a half percent up to 17 or 18 percent for very expensive pieces of land. Uh, in the case of McDonald's, they own the property. They're the largest real estate company in America. I mean, they own all, all their sites almost. And, uh, and other franchises, you own the land and sites, or you lease, and there's different ways of doing that. And so the costs vary depending on if you're leasing a site, buying a site, uh, but, and then you pay a franchise percentage fee of gross sales, you usually pay an advertising marketing fee, and, uh, and there's other costs that vary with that. Uh, McDonald's, there's also franchise costs like uh, anywhere from 30,000 to 60,000 upfront cost that you place down as a one-time fee to buy into their franchise. And so those are kind of varying between most franchises out there. Yeah, one more one or two more questions then I'm gonna go into these 10 points. I was just you yourself. I'll turn on the mic so if you have a question. It's a great question. Okay. It's a great question. And I think you always have to start with goals and targets 
and then reward people for hitting those. And I think it needs to be clear to everyone what those are and uh, whether it's the number of cars you're putting through a drive through or a uh, number of sandwiches you're making or whatever it is, you have different that targets. Works. And then as you hit do those, you reward Do I them. press something? And I to... think that's how you do it. I think with management personnel and upper management, those that are managing your business, the, the rewards are much greater and bigger and larger and other opportunities. Okay, one question here. Oh, at the back at the beginning of my story, thank you. The question is, is why didn't I just, I had a successful advertising thing going, liked well enough that I was moved over from one to another, why not just take off with that? The reason is because I'd been smitten with this, some kind of entrepreneurial bug that said, own your own business and McDonald's seems to be the ticket. And so it, for me, it was McDonald's. For you, it may be anything else. And it becomes your vision or your dream and it occupied, <coughs> it, it occupied most of my waking hours back then of what I really wanted to do with my life. And believe me, that was a point of discussion with my wife and with what we're doing. We have this successful career started, but we really bought into the future of what we could do eventually. So let me, uh, with those questions and with those thoughts, let me move into what, what I call 10 successful steps that were f are for me that might give you some things to jot down. And it, uh, I, I wanted to give you one more quote as I went on, another Vince Lombardi quote. Uh, the difference between a successful person and others is not a lack of strength, not a lack of knowledge, but rather a lack of will. And if you're hearing anything from me tonight, this evening, it's this idea of having a firm resolve in your heart, a, a dream or a vision where you're going, and then having a will to achieve that. The only thing that stands between a person and what they want in life is the will to try it, the faith to believe it is possible. And, and I think you have to have those kind of convictions as you're, as an entrepreneur and as you're trying to create business and get out there. So let me, uh, uh, let me jump to these 10 points. I call it the nature of success, my 10 steps. And the first one is vision. I think you need to have, be a dreamer. Uh, McDonald's founder, Ray Kroc, was known as Danny the Dreamer. And he was in his mid-50s when he started McDonald's. And, uh, you know, and it's, you, you have to have this vision and this dream. And that's, and it's, uh, I like this uh, thought with that. The wave of passion can become an unstoppable force. What happens when you believe in something with all your heart? Belief fuels enthusiasm and determined enthusiasm explodes into passion. It fires our souls and lifts our spirit. And that's what this business resolve of mine became. Uh, three, or, and then number two is, is believe. So vision, believe, and under that I just have thought that you have to have a hope, uh, faith, and anchors in your life to what you're, what you're trying to achieve. Uh, each time we face fear, we can gain strength, courage, and confidence in the doing. Stay focused on your vision. Number three is have a plan. Uh, create it, develop it, and stick with it no matter what. I like this quote. There are no shortcuts to any place worth going. There are no shortcuts to any place worth going. You have to pay the price. You have to have that plan. Number four is action. You have to act upon the plan. Do things no one else has ever done. Me working on Saturdays in a McDonald's while I was an advertising executive. You know, doing things different that nobody else expects you to do. Get excited. Uh, enthusiasm will take you further than talent, title, or skill. Be enthused about what you're doing. Number five, have mentors. Along the way in my life, I had significant mentors, and they're important to have. Uh, during that period of time, I would go to different ones that were very important people. Uh, one was a, a United States senator that became a, a good mentor to me, who I would visit on a regular basis and 
ask questions, and he would encourage me to stick with what I'm doing. Another one owned a very large grocery chain, and he kept trying to me to quit my McDonald's thing and go to work for him. But these mentors gave me ideas and thoughts. You need these mentors in your life as young people, as you're going to college and, and, do, and studying and learning what you want to do. You have to develop these mentors, people that you can call and go with with some specific questions and sit down and talk to them and make sure that they're helping you with where you're going. Uh, number six on my list is hard work and never quit. Uh, a few quotes from that. When we work less, we get fewer results, always work more. The prime role of a leader is to offer an example of courage and sacrifice. Sacrifice is simple, simple. work harder than anyone else and go the extra mile. Do things and you will stand out, stand out in the crowd. I was asked a few years ago where some of our success came from, and I said one word, perspiration. I wasn't the smartest guy around, but I always knew that I could outwork the next guy. And as long as I did that, it, it helped me get where we needed to go. So number seven on my list is character. Character is born from your thoughts and, uh, and what we think about and then what we act upon. And you have to have this character to achieve what you're trying to do. Be willing to accept responsibility for your own life. This is where self-respect begins. And I like this quote from Sir jo uh, Josiah Stamp. He said, it is easy to dodge our responsibilities, but we cannot dodge the consequences of dodging our responsibilities. And uh, you've got to keep that in mind. Now, number eight is help others along the way. Uh, I mentioned to you how we've tried to help people. Uh, we have people that have been managers for us in McDonald's that now own their own McDonald's, own their own Burger Kings, own their own home inspection businesses, uh, uh, and, and many others. And, uh, and so we, we always tried to help people that work for us along the way. And, and we knew that many people that would come to work for us in the fast food industry were there for part-time jobs and this, but we always tried to treat it in such a way that they could learn skills and develop abilities in their lives, and that was important to us. Uh, that's kind of a sense, by the way, of gratitude, isn't it? You have to have a sense of gratitude in your life, and, and I think that makes us better business people when we appreciate those that went before us, those that we work with, and I think this sense of gratitude is very important. Uh, number nine for me is build the brand. Whatever it is you're doing, in my case, it was polishing the arches. I always thought it was my job to polish the McDonald's arches and to really be the kind of person that represented that brand very well in the communities where I did business. So I always tried to build that brand image of McDonald's. At the same time, my McDonald's restaurants always had this kind of Mark and Sue Young uh, name attached. They were our businesses and we were building them uh, with the McDonald's Golden Arches. Uh, you know, a couple of points with that. I always felt like if I kept my restrooms clean, it was worth 2% a year in increased sales. And, and in the McDonald's business on an interstate, I always knew that if my restaurants were sparkling, clean, that it was always good for an additional 2% in sales. And those were ways of polishing a, at the brand. Uh, I, I created years and years ago this concept in McDonald's, and if I ask you the question, how many of you in a McDonald's ever had somebody come up and take a tray from you, you'd say almost never. I mean, you, the policy in McDonald's, you buy your food, you go sit down, you go dump your own tray, and you leave. But we had this policy called 100 trays a day, and each manager had to, during the course of their work, go take 100 trays a day from people, dump them for them, and talk to them about. And, and that, to you, might seem almost unheard of in some of your fast food experience. But for us, that's how we built ourselves 24 out of 26 years. Uh, and then the final one is payback. Give back it to the communities where you do business. So those are my 10 steps to, uh, of, or successful formula for doing business. Uh, and, and I think those are important. Uh, happiness is knowing that the best things in life aren't things. And for me, it wasn't about trying to own 100 McDonald's, it was about whatever I did have of doing it the best I could. And so those are some of the principles that we live by and how we developed our business. Uh, 
Mike, before I move into questions, are there things that, that you've known me for many years that we should talk about for a couple of minutes that would be helpful to what you know these students are, and young people are looking for? Okay. Yeah, good. How did you take one off the board and turn it around? Good. Great question. Some of the franchises we bought with McDonald's were brand new. The, the one in Park City was built from the ground up. My second one, I inherited one up in Evanston, Wyoming, and took it over. One of the first things we did up there to turn that was I, I put uh, saddles in the playland. Now that sounds funny to some of you, but I looked at that and what it's a it's a children's market, and I did things like put uh, saddles in a playland. But uh, to be specific with some of the business management principles is when we took over a restaurant, we tried to analyze the community where we were. We draw a three mile circle around where we were, and we began to identify who our customers were and how we were going to reach them and get to them. Most importantly, I would start inward. In, inward within the business. If I were to ask any of you that own a business, who's the most important person in your business, 90% of you would say the customer. And you say, it's the customer, that's one. To me, I live by a different principle. My principle is the most important person in my business was my employees. I knew if I took care of my employees and took care of the people that work for me, they would take care of who? The customers. And so that's how we looked at that when we took over businesses. We took uh, over some of these from existing franchisees and we knew the first thing was to fix the internal struggles or the internal problems within a, the restaurant. And as we fixed those, then we could quickly reach out to the community. Uh, we always believed in giving back. I mean, you know, we always believed in trying to, wherever we did business, we looked at the community and what could we do to contribute and give back to that community where we did business. So let me open this up to questions at this point because I think it'll lead us into multiple points of franchising that might be on your mind and how we do some of that, so. Yes, thank you. McDonald's is a remarkable company and they've, they've done remarkable things for many years and, and they, uh, they'll go through different ups and downs and, and struggles but they always seem to eventually do what's right and get to where they need to be. And most of my experience has been with them. And, and, and we've had wonderful success and, and, and really feel privileged that we were part of their franchise for so many years. Uh, and, and one of the concerns you have is uh, you know, different franchises have exclusivity rights and things built into the franchise agreements where uh, non-compete clauses, where you cannot open a competing businesses and own both and this and that. And so that's why I was exclusively McDonald's for so many years. And now that I'm not currently a franchisee of McDonald's, I've been trying to explore and look at other things I could do over the next few years. Uh, I think the best thing you can do if you're looking for different kinds of franchises and you're looking what you want to do, you've got to do something that you enjoy every day. You've got to do things that you want to do and you like doing it. If you choose things that you don't, you won't have a passion for it. I mean, if it's anything that you'll get from me tonight is that I have a passion for what we did and what we have done for so many years. I've loved it. Uh, and so you've got to look for that right kind of deal. You know. uh, I like the idea of looking for young franchises that are up and starting. I think it would be unique for many of you to look for a franchise out there that has sound principles, seem to be the type of young company that's going to eventually really take off, and you get in on the ground floor of that. You get in at the beginning. Uh, and, and keep this principle in mind, with, along with your question. Keep this principle in mind. They need you. Maybe more than you need them, or at least equal. 
my point with that is when, when you're out applying and looking to get into a franchise with a company, keep in mind that they're evaluating you, but you're evaluating them, and they need you. And, and so if you're really a talented young guy that can, or young woman that can just do something really special with this company, and they quickly learn that through some of their initial interviews with you and their discovery of who you are, that gives you an opportunity to barter and talk with them because not all fees and not all things may be fixed in stone. And so you may have some room to negotiate some different things. Does that help? Yeah, it does. Okay, other questions? Um, did you choose to own or lease your real estate, and why did you make that? Great question. Uh, I mentioned earlier, McDonald's is really a large real estate company because in their business model, they own their land. They choose to lease very little. They, they never want to lease if they don't have to. They will lease from, uh, in, in certain circumstances, but they try to own. The franchisee, in the McDonald's business model, never owns the land. McDonald's corporate always owns it. At the end of the day, you walk away and you don't own that. That's something to keep in mind, incidentally, because there are franchises out there that you have the chance to buy the land. And in the long run, that's a sweet, that's the way you want to be. But it depends, because McDonald's is a proven success formula, and you get in there whether you own the land or not, uh, they, they've made more millionaires than any other, probably American company. I mean, they're tremendously successful. Let me jump over here, and we'll come back to you. So, McDonald's Corporation, they, they tell you what price to sell the product at. They're stating all the advertising for you. They don't set the pricing. It's an oh, okay. individual franchise that set all the pricing. Okay. Well, at minimum, with your franchise agreement, you open the hours they tell you you're going to open, you sell the products you're going to sell. Now, everything in addition to that would be up to you as a franchisee, whether or not you get out and become a part of the, uh, the local high school sports teams or whether you sponsor reading clubs at the elementary schools or whether you do all these things on a marketing level to market the product better in your communities. Nobody's setting that standard for you. You're doing that as a franchisee. They, almost all franchises out there have your franchise fee and then they have an advertising marketing fee in addition to that. And, and it's a percent of sales. And so uh, many of them are two, anywhere from two to four percent margins where those large companies are charging the franchisee a percent in order to spend and they make those decisions as to where that, those dollars are being spent. But on a global level, think about 4% of 14,000 American McDonald's restaurants and a 4% of average volume sells well over 2 million per site. What do you think your advertising dollars are? I mean, they're hundreds of millions of dollars and, th and they spend that money to, to promote the product. Good question. Right back here. Well, these companies that you're describing are large global right. companies, and, and they're trying to grow their business and product in all these different companies. Be more specific with me. So is it a similar, if you want to start, we started a franchise here in the United States. What's the process? Is it different for starting it in another country? Yeah, good question. And, and different companies have different guidelines for uh, what their rules are for your expansion. Uh, yeah, McDonald's is, is uh, basically the principle or the rule there was always that they wanted you to own and operate restaurants within an hour driving distance of where, where you lived. Uh, 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 there's another franchise I'm dealing with right now, we're looking at called Culver's, it's a Wisconsin based company that they draw a three mile circle around the site, your first site you open, and no one else can build within that three miles and you have no other rights. 
no other territories. No, so if you build a second one, you just go somewhere else and a three miles. Long. So, and other companies sell you territories and or rights to X number of franchises within a territory that you purchase, whether it's an entire state or a portion of uh, an area. Does that help? You know, I think they're probably similar to almost all franchises out there. They're looking for uh, sound business minds, people that can grow their brand, people that can represent their company in a quality way. So they do a discovery with you. You come in and they spend time with you and they get, they look at your background, they look at your financial strength, they look at your experience. <coughs> and they look, is this person going to build our brand? Is it somebody that we want to sign an agreement with that we're going to have to live with legally for the next 15 or 20 years? Is that a person that we want representing us? So in a broad, uh, that's a broad answer to that question. If you get into specific characteristics, you can imagine what there are from integrity to honesty to business experience and your ability to market or get out in a community? Uh, do you have social skills? All of those things would apply in that franchise. There was a hand that's been up for a while here. Yeah. As you've been researching into different franchises, where are you searching into those franchises? Well, Sue thinks I'm nuts because I came home and I just kind of, the last six months that we've been home from Oregon where we served a, a mission for the LDS Church, we spent the last six months uh, I've been looking at a lot of different ideas, and and most of those are in the food industry because that's what I know best. And uh, one of the things, let me answer that this way. One of the things I'm trying to do different is I'm not looking at the stage of life that I'm in. I'm looking differently than you might be for what business you're about to start. You're young. You've got all the energy, enthusiasm. I'm old and a has-been kind of thing, you know, and I'm not necessarily wanting to go out and work myself to death now in the sunset years of my life, you know. So here's what I'm thinking about, and I've spent a lot of time the last six months considering this, and I think it's a good business principle, is I'm looking for the type of franchise and business that I can own, but develop and build younger people and create great opportunities for them to own businesses of their own. So I'm looking for ways to put people into some of these businesses with me in a junior partnership idea that, that I'm the financial backing, the support, and get it going, and I'm going to have junior partners that run it far better than I could now because you have legs. You can run. You can have energy and get a lot of things done, and I can be the mentor behind that. And so those are the kinds of things I'm looking for that I could do that business model with. This, this concept of a junior partner that could have a percentage of the business. Spencer. At the beginning? Well, thank you. It's, it's, it's a long time ago now. I mean, it's 30 years ago, and at that time, it, it was very difficult to get into McDonald's just like it would be today. I mean, it's, it's a difficult franchise company to get into. It's one of the toughest. And it was back then, too. But there was a problem that was going on back then, Spencer, with, with McDonald's. They were not attracting young professionals, young, aggressive, enthusiastic, what I'm talking about, these, like all of you, people that could really help their their brand really take off and grow. They had a lot of investors, a lot of older people that had been in the business, but they wanted a way, and so they created a, a program called the Business Facilities Lease. And it was in existence for a short period of time with McDonald's where you could come into McDonald's, you might not have as much money as the other guy, but you could get in uh, with that lease program and then lease the site for the first three years and then have enough money that you make that you could then buy the business. And so they were creating that. But more specific to your question, though, 
is what it was like. Uh, Sue, how long were we? Were we 18 months to two years before we got one? What's that? Okay. One of the, you, McDonald's would put you at the beginning, you, you applied for the franchise. If they liked you, you went through a series of interviews. And if they liked you, and I'm assuming this is similar to others, then they assigned you to an existing McDonald's licensee. And they assign you to that person and you go to work for these 20 hours a week in that McDonald's restaurant. And, you begin, and he or she begins to teach you how to run it. Every few months with that, you would also be responsible to go into a regional training class with McDonald's Corporation, and you'd have to take exams and, and pass tests and all these things to continue to move along in that franchise. So it was very regimented, it was very uh, specific, uh, involved at your, all at your own expense, all at your own time, uh, including trips back to their famous Hamburger University in Chicago, uh, where you get a degree in hamburgerology, and, uh, and, and those things in that McDonald's world were all very real things and very important, and, and uh, frankly, uh, yeah. led the industry in, the, in their training. And so those are the kinds of mm -hmm. things we did over that time, while I was holding down another part full-time job trying to do those things, so it wasn't easy. Yeah. I've got a question about if you were to do some sort of promotion or something for your business, did you be represented in McDonald's as well? Did they have any sort of kickback program where you were compensated for your career or anything like that? They are, they are great partners, and they, they always had different kinds of, uh, not so much in the marketing area, they, they would, it wasn't that you would get a kickback from a particular promotion, but they would contribute dollars and so would you. And so corporate was always contributing, licensees were contributing for mutually beneficial promotions. Along the same lines of that is when a restu restaurant gets old and tired after several years and needs remodeling, they often had programs in place where they would uh, provide for you uh, some incentives to rebuild or remodel where they would throw dollars in in that regard. So f that's one of the advantages when you talk about franchising, parent companies it's in their best interest to not only support, but provide funding behind programs to re-image, remodel, and do those kinds of things. Okay, that's kind of the yeah, and, and they had that, and, and I think many of these companies do. Like, like any business, I think it's, it's, it's heavy loaded on the front end. And, and, it pro and it better be, because you know, you're young, you've got the energy, you better really develop a great foundation. What you're trying to do is create a nice foundation that then just helps build on its own. Uh, you always have to be involved as an owner. You always have to be a hands-on type of person that's looking and watching, unless you're an investor. But if you're an operator, and you're in these business, you have to keep an eye on it. To answer your question specifically, is it's, it's fewer hours the longer you go. The beginning, uh, it was lots of hours, and as you develop great management, the, take your place, it lowers and goes, as it goes less. Good question. It's a good question, and I think, for me, I, I was a believer always, folks, with uh, annually pulling my management team out of the restaurant for a few days of evaluation of our business, where we're going. I always felt like if you had a say in our meetings and contributing in these kind of uh, retreat, business retreat, business planning sessions on an annual basis, that those are where many of our great ideas came from. 
Other great ideas came from, uh, I, I was the kind of guy that liked to visit other organizations and see what they were doing. I love to, and, and sometimes you'd take their idea or you'd build upon something they're doing. But I really liked involving management in the creation of ideas and planning because then they felt ownership, felt like they were a part of that. I wanted my people to feel like they had great ownership of what we were trying to accomplish and do. So as a leader, what were some of the most effective things you did to build up your employees? Well, some things are just so obvious and so in front of our face that we don't, we, we don't even think about them. One is I always had a principle or a rule that if whenever I walked into one of my restaurants, I would not do anything before going to every employee that was working and asking them how they're doing, greeting them, saying hi, those kinds of things. I also believed in empowerment, empowering my people to make decisions. The youngest crew person who might be 15 years of age on a Saturday afternoon didn't have to turn and ask me if she could give away a free hamburger to somebody that just complained about something. They were empowered to make those decisions and to do that through our training. So, so I like paying attention to our people, taking an interest in them, knowing about their lives. You know, all of you at one time or another, or most of you, it sounds like we'll end up in business and owning your own business, maybe if you're lucky and you have that kind of opportunity. One of the things I believe in is, is we would always have, for example, interest-free loans to many of the people that worked for me. If somebody needed $500 for something desperately, they could get interest-free loans from me. I might have as much as $20,000 out there in interest-free loans at any one time in our company. You try to create that family atmosphere. In regards to employees, do you think the advent of automation and robotics will have any impact that's on a great the question. industry or the job of a trained manager? It's probably a question that's over my pay grade, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a great question. And I think we're seeing that in limited levels in the fast food industry or in the restaurant industry where machines that pick up and drop french fries without a person standing there and thing. I think it plays an important role. And I think what's important there is that the manufacturers and the companies keep those costs low and may, you know, because you're never going to replace the person but it can sure help, especially as difficult as it is to hire people today. Yeah, it's just a thought, yeah. But the, my, that leads to my question is, what are some of the sources that are available to research franchise opportunities? Because a small startup type business isn't necessarily one that we would know. Are there, are there sites to go to or are there resources to go to to look at this franchising opportunity? Mike, do you know of those? And I've done some of that, and it's really interesting to do that. I'm kind of my own person where I get, wherever I'm traveling, whatever I'm doing, I'm always paying attention to different new businesses that pop up, and I'm always doing research on that business. You know, I saw a new hamburger place that comes out of uh, California somewhere, and I, and I liked it. We went there for lunch, and I think so. By the end of that day, I had Googled and learned a lot of information about that. And in the last six months, about 20 of these different companies I've phoned. About 12 of them I've talked to about possibilities. And, and, and what you're trying to do is learn about them, and then they'll in turn learn about you. Well, I don't know what our time schedule is. Okay, somebody in the back. I, I'm probably ignoring some areas. Just real quick. Sir? Uh, 
No, but I know Mike could. Well, well said. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't off the top of my hand, head, I, I've just been removed from the last four years. And so I don't have some of those. It's a great question. Uh, I, well, I was just going to say, I, I was actually going to say that. Great minds think alike, dear. Uh, Ray, Ray Kroc's book was called Grinding It Out. It's a little bit about what we've talked about today, and it's a great story of how he started McDonald's. And you want to find an interesting story of a guy who's in his mid-50s, who is, he, he, you know what he was doing for a living at the time he created McDonald's? He was selling those shake spindle machines. They had just come out on a market with the company he was working for, one that could spindle four shakes at a time, you know, and with those little spindles. And he was selling those to restaurants. And he got an order for eight of them from a company out in California. He was in Chicago. He, nobody ever ordered. They ordered maybe one, you know. And so he jumped in his car and delivered them to California. And it was the McDonald brothers that had started a fast food restaurant. And, and that's, he just fell in love with the idea. But, but then he created, more importantly than that restaurant, he, what he created was one of the per most perfect franchising companies. And that's what he, he created at that point. One other question. I'm following you from Roosevelt. Can, can I ask a question? I'm calling from a remote location in Roosevelt. Um, how do you find operating you know, one store is over there. very... And, and uh, I think you just, number one, you have to know your communities. If you're a, simply an investor, you may not know. You, but if you're in operating, you live in your communities or you work in these communities and, uh, and you pay attention, you can see different types of things you can contribute to. One that I felt was very successful that at the same time of contributing to the community, but also build our business at the same time, was local fundraising opportunities. Uh, we think we did that as well or better than anyone because what we did was created an option for school sport clubs or uh, music groups or other groups that needed to raise money. They could come in and work in our restaurant for a couple of hours in the evening and most companies would give away up to maybe 25% of their take for during the hours that they were fundraising, and they would get to take that 25% home. Long ago, we set that at 50%. We said, you can come in, help us that evening for those few hours, be a part of it, bring all the people in. Your sales would go up. If you normally did $1,000 that evening in sales, we might do five or six or 7,000 on a night of a fundraising deal, and they got to keep 50%. And, uh, and we love that concept because it brought so many people in. It contributed to their club, their organization. Uh, sometimes it got very personal. Sometimes it got very intimate with people who needed help. And so you look for opportunities in the communities. If you're How about business, one more question? In, what's that? Mark, I think we have How about one more question? Oh, that's what, uh, yes, else. sorry. The, the I'm, place from I'm China. Uh, I'm listening from Roosevelt, and uh, I, I, I've got a question about uh, some operations. I know you had multiple stores. How do you find it going from one or two stores and then proceeding into multiple stores? When you get focused on one store and so entrenched to it, how do you give up uh, yourself to be able to run multiple stores, I guess? Well, it's a great question. If you're not careful when you have multiple operations going on, you might only go where uh, there seems to be an alarm or a problem. You have to be always thinking and planning what, what do these restaurants need, and you're there to, de to, to answer the call to develop what they need in those particular restaurants. And so uh, you also, again, about developing people. You are always developing good people underneath you to help uh, spread out and cover the territory. Hope that helps. Uh, you've been a great audience. I told Mike that I know he has very impressive people to come and speak to you. I'm a hamburger flipper. Uh, 
I love it. I love what it's done to facilitate for my family, for what we've been involved in our lives. I wish you the very best of luck. Franchise is a great way to go, but you are wonderful people. You're young. You've got your whole lives ahead of you. Bless you. I hope you do a great job throughout your life.